ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're back. The fellas are back together. Finally. It's been a couple weeks since it's been all three of us. Evan had Destiny. Jagger took a mental health week. You know, we all need those from time to time. Yeah. But we're back. We are back. We have a great episode today. Uh, We're going to talk about our next two movies on the IMDb list. The uh, Indian film Children of Heaven. Iraq, no. Iraq? Iran. Persia? So far away? Oh. 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 (laughs) Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was Iraq or Iran, one of those two. That dude, that sounds so racist. We'll, we'll figure it out by the time we get there. <laughs> it's somewhere in the Middle East. We know anyway. that. Um, Children of Heaven. And Deathly Hollows Part 2, which me and Evan yeah. will be talking about We're because talking Jagger... about all eight Harry Potter movies. Essentially, as quickly as we can. Yeah, because I don't <laughs> think... Prisoner of Azkaban's on this list, unfortunately. I don't actually yeah, that's know, my, but I doubt it. That's my number four Harry Potter yeah. movie. We disagree on Harry Potter rankings, but we both that's agree fine. that it's amazing. So I'm happy. Half-Blood Prince, Deathly <laughs> Hollows Part 1, Deathly Hollows Part 2, Yeah. Prisoner of Azkaban, Order the Phoenix, Chamber of Secrets, Sorcerer's Stone, Goblet of Fire. Wow. Goblet yeah, of Fire conversa- isn't good. We're going to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we're talking about that today. We're going to go over some movie news. I actually yeah. have stuff in my watch list to talk about this week. Yeah. Uh, I think last episode I had like two movies to <laughs> talk about. Two. Which is kind of out of form for me. Jagger is currently trying to break my record of single mo- like single logs in a month. I feel like short films shouldn't count, though. I'm not going to lie. I Jagger, here's the Jagger's thing. a shorts I had, merchant. I see him logging I, a bunch of half stars and one and a half stars, and I click on them, and it's like 15 minutes long. I had okay. three, short I films. Had, I had two shorts that month okay. that I did 148. I had two shorts, and I had three episodes of Black Mirror, but I also made up with it because in that same month, I also logged Captain America and... No, uh... Falcon and Winter Soldier, which mm-hmm. is like an eight episode miniseries, and Loki, yeah. which is like an eight episode min- miniseries. Right. So it kind of evened each other out. Because yeah. I, over there, um, I have a board <laughs> of everything I'm going to watch. He has it like planned out on a calendar. That's I have, crazy. I have it all on a board there, on like a cork board of everything I'm watching. And it does equate to like 155, and it is a mix of features and shorts. It's it should work, and I'm doing it like all of next month. My whole month is planned. Okay. So, oh, you're starting for, in July. Yeah, I'm doing it for July. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, we'll talk about watch list. Some of the latest movie news, including the announcement of a Spaceballs two. Do we uh, talk about the new Russo's Brothers movie? It, you do you not like the Russo brothers? No. Oh, Why? Man. That's unfortunate. Because they made the Gray Man, and they yeah, just, but they also made they just suck. four of the top five best Marvel movies. Civil War is overrated. You're so ill. For nice that. love. So I agree to disagree. They I can't they believe made, I they not not only made <laughs> Civil War, they made Winter Soldier, That's a good and. Movie. Five, Both four, Infinity half, War and Endgame. Yeah. Uh, if they're making Marvel movies, they know what they're doing. Um, Their scripts suck, though. Outside of Marvel, the scripts for those movies don't suck. They're, yeah, yeah. they're okay. They're not. They're nothing amazing, but they don't suck as much they as like. They don't capitalize Cherry. on their budgets because their budgets are astronomical and the movies are fine that's crazy that is crazy that you're telling you me the gray man is a good movie and it's i never said 300... that i said within the constraints of the mcu yeah, the russo no. brothers are good directors yeah no 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 okay i 100 percent agree because man we're already off to it i'm so happy I'm so happy we're back um <laughs> winter soldier phenomenal film my t- top five mcu top three probably I don't really like Civil War that much. I've only seen it once. 
No, it's good. Watch it, brother. Infinity War is phenomenal. Oh. Endgame even, was phenomenal even, on first even watch. Even Jagger Endgame... like Civil War. Yeah. yeah. Mr. doesn't like action movies. Yeah, Civil War's good. It's good. But John Wick sucks. That's crazy. Yeah, it does. <laughs> ah, whatever. <laughs> um, but I think, okay, Endgame, first watch, dude, the first time I saw Endgame, I saw that shit opening night, like a pre-screening of Endgame before Twitter was full of spoilers. Yeah, I was like, this too. is my favorite Marvel movie ever. This is the coolest yeah. shit ever. It's that and, that is the greatest theater experience I've ever had is watching yeah, Endgame phen- in the theater. Yeah, it's a that is the only experience. time when I'm like cool with people cheering. We were all yeah. cheering throughout the whole oh, movie. Really? My theater, yeah, was dude, I loved it. When but, Thor, when like it's like Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America staring yeah. down at Thanos after he ta- attacked Avengers Compound, we were all like, yeah. <laughs> or when Captain America picked up Mjolnir, oh boy! I thought I the remember... theater. I thought an earthquake was happening. The theater was shaking. <laughs> I remember the grin on my face when I realized that they were going back in time to the first Avengers movie, and I was like, "This is the coolest shit I've ever seen." Yeah, um, it's a great movie. Yeah, it, it's a great movie. But I do think that on rewatch, it's the same thing that No Way Home kind of has, not to an as severe extent, because No No Way Home is built on fan service and theater moments like there's moments in yeah. that movie where there's pauses for clapping which is insane like when daredevil walks in i do think that endgame loses some rewatch value but i, I will not deny that history. it is one of the best theater experiences i've ever had and the first time i saw it i said it was my favorite marvel film of all time I will never deny that. That was phenomenal. And none of my friends had seen it, and they kicked me out of every single group chat I was involved in and blocked me on social media because they weren't seeing it for a few days, and they were like... I remember it was so funny because they were like, man, which Marvel movie should we watch? Like, I wasn't involved in this conversation. And they were like, oh, we can probably skip Ant-Man and the Wasp. And I was like, er, er. And I was like, oh, you might want to watch Ant-Man and the Wasp. And gone. I was gone. <laughs> Dude, Ant-Man and the Wasp, it's, it had a lot to live up to because it came out right after Infinity War. Yeah. But I don't think it's, it's still bad. pretty good. Yeah. It, like, as long as you have David Dasmel uh, uh T.I., and Michael Pena <laughs> yeah, together. Michael Pena, the goat. Dude, they are so funny together. Yeah. Uh, We're getting on it. But we got sidetracked. There. Uh, yeah. Upcoming episodes. We got a lot. Uh, Friday. It's. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen my letterbox today, but dude, I watched. Yeah, I feel bad. I watched some of Avatar. Um, yeah. Friday, we got maybe the worst episode in the history of the average film enjoyer. The Last Airbender yeah. and After Earth. It's going to be worse than the that triple bad. features of Jeff Prophet. Did you I'd see rather, my review? Jagger, I'd rather sit or... yeah, I did, and watch and I think every that single Jeff Prophet film, film than watch either of those. I'll give you that. It's one of the funniest yeah. reviews I've for read. For anyone who doesn't follow me, you should. My review for Avatar, I haven't finished it. and I don't, I'll, I'll finish it because I rented this fucking movie for the it's podcast. It's not that bad. My review says, I would rather shit in my hands and clap than finish this movie. So I will finish it tomorrow <laughs> because I paid for it. But let me tell you, it's pretty bad. And my After Earth review, I said, let this, please God, let this be the worst of it. Mama, I'm tired. Um, I'm so excited yeah. for Friday. And then, speaking of shitting in hands, next Friday, we got The Visit, <sighs> and we got Split. <laughs> what a transition, that is, bro. That's insane. You killed uh, me. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. oh. Oh, I'm real. I'm real proud. I'm proud of that one. I thought that was pretty that was good. I'll give you that one. I'll give you. Yeah, that. that's like a Cash and Carl level transition. That's good stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we got the visit and we got Split. I'm excited to see Jagger. You haven't watched Split yet, have you? No, I've not. I'm scared. I'm excited. I do think you will like it. I think you'll like the the at the very least. I think you'll love the performances because James McAvoy kills God, it. Dude. He's, so, he's good. so damn good in that. That might be his best role. I mean, he's playing 26 different personalities, so. That's Fair true. And, and he plays all of them phenomenally. Yeah, he's so damn that good in that. Sick. 
Uh, and then as far as IMDb movies go, next Tuesday, Million Dollar Baby and Klaus, Depression and Happiness in one yeah. episode. Uh, I don't know how I feel about watching a Christmas movie in June, but, you know, say. we're going to do it. Christmas in June. There you go. Ooh. We're just a month early, Christmas in June. We'll call it our Costco early. episode. <laughs> because they start smelling Christmas decorations in June. Get it? Nice. Ha! And then wow. after that, we got maybe the best Studio Ghibli movie. I think so. It's my favorite. Um, Spirited Away. No. my na- Spirited Away is way farther along. Uh, okay. We got My Neighbor Totoro. And yes. Jagger loves My yes. Neighbor Totoro. And Catch Me If You Can. Peak. Yeah. Gonna be a great episode. Okay. I've only seen one Studio Ghibli movie, so I'm excited. Which one? Grave of the Fireflies. Okay, so this will be and like it's not your even first, Miyazaki. Like, true Ghibli. Ghibli. It'll, it'll be my first Miyazaki Ghibli film. Hell okay. yeah, dude! That's awesome. Yeah. Welcome to the world of happiness and sweetness. Speaking yes. of Miyazaki, I am gonna do my best to make it to the episode on Friday. We might have to record Saturday, but uh, Hidetake Miyazaki's masterpiece Elden Rings DLC comes out Friday. And oh yeah, people, you can be expecting our episode to come out on Saturday. It'll probably come out Saturday because I will be playing that shit all day. I booked work off, and yeah, hell yeah. Um, (laughs) the superior Miyazaki. Yeah, that's what we got coming up. Like, subscribe, do the usual things. What I always say. Uh, Give us a follow on our socials. Uh, Go check out OJ Productions. Jagger comes out. I did watch your short. I watched the short. Oh shit! What did you you think? Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Ah, dude, the I. That feels like it only goes backwards. Needle drop. Yeah. It's good shit. I love Tam and Paula. Yeah. Some really uh, good needle drops. Yeah, I like that. I Jagger comes out with the new short. Well, once a, I, it's, it feels like it's like once a month we got a new Jagger Nelson short. Uh, I try, but I've been slowing down. I've been trying to make them better. So, I don't know. Yeah. Go check him out. Jagger has some good shit on there now. He will be coming out with good shit. He's always coming out with good shit. Uh, me and Evan are biased because we're friends with him and we just like stuff our friends make. Uh, but I genuinely think it's really good stuff. So you should go check out some of that. Free logs on Letterboxd, which yes. we love. Some of them. Some dick reported the rest of them. Um, <sighs> I hate that. Yeah, that's so <laughs> stupid. Uh, I remember going off on an episode about that person <laughs> when that happened. Yeah. <laughs> that was so fucking i hated that dude that made me so angry um but yeah that's what we got coming up um please join us for those um you know uh, uh really quick quick plug um yours truly will be appearing on the shot by shot podcast shout out to alex will oscar and ryan um we recorded a furiosa episode that i mentioned a week or two ago that's coming out soon and saturday i will be guest starring on a i saw the tv glow episode and we'll be yapping hard about that so i'll make sure to put them on our letterbox hq i finally got it up and running and uh it's still got the remnants of jaggers uh. <laughs> backdrop that because i need to replace it with curtains um but yeah i'm gonna i'll make sure to link it there and we'll plug it those guys are amazing and they're really insightful when it comes to film so make sure to check them out uh they just released a hitman review episode and yeah that'll be fun have do you guys follow synesthetic on twitter yeah yes how horny is that account very jesus christ dude yeah it's like every time i open twitter it's like the first synesthetic post. Here's like a shot of Jennifer Connelly in lingerie in some movie yeah. from the '90s, and I'm like, "Yeah, cool, but okay." Dude, it was so That's funny. Like all you I'm, post. Sit- I'm sitting on the couch next to Beth, and she's like, "Why are there titties on your Twitter?" And I was like, "Oh, it's a film account. Don't worry." <laughs> <laughs> she's like, "I'm not mad. Let me see them." But, <laughs> um, but movie news. Toy Story 5 releases in two years. I I wanted to talk about this. 
because I also saw this headline, and I was listening to a video game podcast today, and they brought up a point about how they think it's irresponsible to announce something so far away. Yeah. I I just think about that. I think that... Because you're building up too much... There's going to be too much expectation. It's bound to fail, because there's going to be too many expectations built up. I think you, you you release the release date a year out, because two years you're probably getting a delay two years is too much time like they were they were talking about uh the indiana jones game the new one coming out kind of funny and when is that coming out it there's no set release date it's supposed to come out this year but like they say i'm 2024 for that yeah it's gonna be sick it's made from the the gameplay looks so fun wolfenstein is sick um yeah but i I, when when uh, I saw the Inside Out thing, I was like, or Toy Story thing, I was like, why are you announcing this? Like, well, why are you even making it? Yeah, I don't. That is, the I'm first still question. pissed that they made Toy Story four. Toy Story three was a perfect conclusion. Yeah, we got Toy Story four, and it's fine. And then we got Lightyear. I haven't seen it. I've heard it's okay. Jagger, have you? What's your opinion on this? On the um. Toy Story, on I mean, the, like, facts we're getting a Toy Story 5 and Toy Story 4. Okay, I think Toy Story 4 was fine. I saw it in theaters, but I was younger, so it was like, I liked it then. I came back to it recently, and I just sort of thought, eh. Because I went through yeah. all the Toy Story movies again, and yeah. my thoughts were really just, eh. Like, it's fine, but they could have very well ended on Toy Story 3. But I think yeah. there's some likability with Toy Story 4. However, yep. I think that bringing it any further than that, you're really stretching what needs to be done by all means. Yeah. And I think I Toy Story 5, there's no way it's going to be anything like what the first three were. It won't be. Yeah. And now having the hype up, it's it's imminent doom, which is just what Disney's kind of good at. Yeah, like overextending IPs. Yeah. Um. Because, like, you, you like Toy Story 3, right? That's my favorite Toy Story. I think it's Evan's favorite. Um, yeah. It's I do. excellent. Uh, and it's heartbreaking. And it's yeah. a perfect conclusion. It ends on a good note. Um, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean, so that's much. just what Disney does, is they overextend these IPs and try to stretch too much out of them, you know, instead yeah. of just creating new original content. Yeah. The fact that uh, if you go and buy a Woody toy... Dude, that sounds so dirty. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, pause. <laughs> from, from Disney or something? Pause. Um, <laughs> Evan, why are you buying Woody toys? Yeah. From Disney, much less. Yeah, yeah what the that's hell? Rough. That's crazy. Um, and it, <laughs> hey, it man, says... Bonnie I watched on... the first Omen on Disney+. Plus. Hell Disney yeah. has gone <laughs> downhill. Disney is yep. not what it used to be. I watched Dude, a movie so on sad. Disney+, they... Plus where a demon hand comes out of a woman's private parts. Yeah, on Disney true. Plus, yeah. I watch poor things on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I, but oh jeez, um, that makes me so sad. As if you go and buy a doll of Woody, it says Bonnie on the foot now and not Andy. Like, that's so dumb. That's insane. That's disgusting. Yeah, can't even believe that. Yeah, I feel like um, a Star- I feel like a Star Wars fan right now. Like, what? Are, why are we? Do- Come on, <laughs> dude. Trey called me the other day, Jagger, and he was. We'll we'll talk about that. Like, and uh, we'll finish Star with that Wars. because I have a rant. To go on. <laughs> he called me. He goes, I was I was like, oh, sorry, I was taking a piss, and he just ranted for like ten minutes about Star Wars and the mm-hmm. acolyte. It was really funny, um, <laughs> and not the rant that everybody else is having. Yeah, it's a uh, rant well, yeah, about that, that rant. Yeah. Uh, Lego Batman movie is now streaming on Netflix. If you haven't w. seen the Lego Batman movie, one of the top five animated movies ever made, and Spit. in my top five favorite comedies, go watch it. It's, it's absolutely good. hilarious. It is. It is. It's just, uh, yeah. My name is Richard, but everybody at the orphanage calls me Dick. Well, children can be cruel. Uh, <laughs> Dude, it's so one of the good. best lines of the movie. Yeah. It's peak. Um, yeah. The Flan Man, the Flan God, Mike to- Flanagan. Yes. Exorcist film. Speaking of announcing release dates too far in advance, March 13th, 2026. 
Yeah, what are we doing here? Come what on. What are we doing here? Usually you I trust say you're in making the name. It. Don't put a re release date on this. I usually I trust in the name of Mike Flanagan. Yeah. Come on, man. What are we? What are you doing? Um, yeah. Not cool. <laughs> Dude, Trey, the uh, the new Russell Crowe Exorcist movie comes out this week, and Ryan went and saw it, and he gave it a one and a half and said it was not very funny or self-aware, and that made me really sad. Ugh. So there's no Is, it, there's is there no any Vespas. scenes of him on a moped? No. Oh. oh. Uh, Where's the fun in that? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Here's something. Uh, I don't know. Trey, have you seen the Lethal Weapon movies? Seen the first one. Okay. How about you, Jager? Um, I've seen the first one as well. All right. Yeah. Well, there's a new the one. The first one rips. Gary Busey is so good in that movie. Dude, all of them rip. <laughs> and and what it went like the ending bait what basically is like a no holds barred UFC fight yeah. between <laughs> Gary Busey and Mel Gibson on someone's front yard lawn. Crazy. <laughs> Dude, Joe Pesci and Chris Rock and Jet Li are in Lethal Weapon 4. It's gas. Lethal Weapon peak series. I need to watch the rest of those. <laughs> Dude, I can't hear Gary Busey's name without thinking about buttered sausage. Buttered sausage. <laughs> I thought that was a real video when Cash sent it to me, and he's like, nah, it's AI. But I definitely thought that was a real video. Yeah. Uh, you guys have um, we news? got the bike riders coming out soon. Yeah, I had forgotten I have about. <laughs> you have tickets? I'd forgotten about it, and then all these clips started coming up on TikTok, and I'm like, oh man, I forgot that I'm so excited for this movie. You know what's crazy <laughs> is that the the Nosferatu trailer is playing exclusively before the bike riders starting yeah. this weekend. So Love that. Uh, yes, <laughs> that, that is a genius marketing just for the trailer. Technique. Just for the trailer. Yeah. I do like Jeff Nichols, though. Take Shelter's peak. Um, Spaceballs 2. Cinema. Yes. No, that does not mean <laughs> people. That's, Jag that's not Jagger's type of humor. Stop. No, no, no. I love the first Spaceballs. Don't oh. get me wrong. I love the first Spaceballs. It does not need a sequel. Did either of you see History of the World Part 2? Well, no. It is a mess. And I think that's exactly what we're gonna get. Yeah, I, if I will go see it. Counterpoint with Blazing if, Saddles is one of the funniest movies ever made. I agree, but that's Mel Brooks. Then we're talking about a sequel to a Mel Brooks movie without Mel Brooks attached. No, Spaceballs oh, is in it. the works he's with. It. Yeah, is it? Yeah, Mel oh, Brooks. Oh, well, hope has been restored. Thank God. And I hope they bring Rick Moran. Mel Brooks and Josh Gad. I hope we okay. get, yeah. in the okay. next month or so, we get to talk about a title that says, Rick Moranis will be making his acting return in Spaceballs 2. <laughs> we need him back, dude. There's no one like him. Dude, I was, um, watching, uh, I was watching the Family Guy Star Wars special today. And it made me just now think of Rick Moranis in the <laughs> There's a Little Shop of Horrors. No, uh not Little Shop of Horrors, shit. What's the Yeah, Little Shop of Horrors, I think. Yeah, Little Shop, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a there's this whole thing where uh somebody uses Stewie's time machine. Oh, Mort uses Stewie's time machine. And they walk up to the room and the whole like choir from Little Shop of Horrors is up there and it's like Rick Moran is narrating in a song, and it's like, da -da. I saw a strange guy come up here. Da -da, more the Jew. <laughs> Head to poo. Dude, it's so good. I love Bailey Guy. It's so good. Uh, did you Were you guys able to check out uh, the trailer for the new Jesse Eisenberg and Kieran Culkin movie? Mm. Uh, a Real Pain. I did not, because I just want to see it. No, I don't think I did. Okay. Well, I watched the trailer. This looks excellent. Jesse Eisenberg is directing. It just looks like them being goofy. It looks fun. Yeah, I think it premiered at one of the festivals, and the reviews are really solid. Yeah. Jesse Eisenberg is so Sasquatch Sunset. We 
first look at Tom Hiddleston in Mike Flanagan's next movie, The Life of Chuck. Listen to this cast. Mark Hamill, Tom Hiddleston, Karen Gillan, Chi... Chi... Chi Wattel... You got Efe, it. Chi Wattel... Ejia Four. There we go. You nailed the first name, uh, though. Matthew Lillard. Yeah. And Jacob Tremblay. That sounds good. Trey, weird. you're only getting better. Nothing you're only getting here. better. When we re review 12 Years a Slave down the line. Yeah, I'll, I'll have it. I will have it. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, that's all I had for movie news. Uh, Smile 2 trailer. It looks sick. It looks sick as fuck. Yeah. Smile we... is underrated. That is true. Don't tell Jagger that, though. <laughs> Dude, we were having Jagger a debate. Smile. In the... <laughs> really? We were having a debate in the Real Talk podcast, and I know that you won't agree with this, Trey, but there was a lot of smile slander going on. Came out yeah. the same year as Nope. And I'm not afraid to say that Smile is a better movie than Nope. I don't think... Better horror movie. Better horror movie. I don't no. think it's a better movie. I don't even think it's a better horror movie. I think Nope is the more well-made movie, but I think Smile yep. has more... Uh, for me, at least, personally, I know, Jagger, you have it at, what, a star, star and a half? It's Yeah, yeah it, it has to be one star. There's no way I give it a star and a half. It, smi- I know Smile, like, if I'm tasked with, like, sitting down and rewatching a movie, eight times out of ten, like, I'm going to choose Smile over Nope. It just has better and higher rewatchability. It's scary, dude. It's it is scary. I it's remember watching unnerving. that in the middle of the night and calling my buddy Justin in the middle of the night, being like, "Justin, I've seen this scene on TikTok. I know what's coming, but I'm still so scared." Hell yeah! <laughs> like where she walks up to the car window and then her head like tilts down. You know yeah. that shit. <laughs> Dude, God, dude, that maybe the greatest my marketing pants. campaign for a movie ever. I can't wait to see the marketing uh, campaign for no. Smile too. That's not true. It wasn't the marketing campaign for Smile too something like if you see this thing then No, they had you're like part of uh it. they had like cardboard cutouts of the Smile at like baseball games and sports oh, events. Oh, no, no like it wasn't too. even cardboard cutouts. It was plants. They hired people oh, to just go yeah. stand there the entire game and just look it's at the cool. camera like it's that. It's awesome. Super creepy. But I love that. I'm talking about no... Smile too. They already did a promotional thing for Oh, did it. they? Yeah, the oh, only shit, the only marketing campaign that will ever come close to the beating the number one is Long Lakes. Yeah. Did you call the phone number, dude? Yes, I did. What we phone tried number? It. Okay, so they put a billboard up, billboard up somewhere in the states. I don't know where, with a phone number on it, and you call it. It's Nick Cage talking really creepy shit to you. I'll send you the tweet, and you should call it. We yeah. tried to call it, but since I'm in Canada, it. It was just a like. Dial you called tone. it Jagger. Yeah, dude, it's really Is it creepy. creepy. Yeah, it's good though. Yeah, it's really cool. So we, dude, uh... I'm, I'm, I am so I, I'm, so, I might be more excited for this than I was for Oppenheimer. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's because w. it's, dude, it's a mystery crime thriller. It's yeah. about an FBI agent searching for a serial killer. Yeah, I saw <laughs> my a favorite today genre. And said, <laughs> I saw a review today and it said Osgood Perkins saw the Silence of the Lambs and said, that's not fucked up enough. Let me make this. <laughs> um, so God, yeah, I'm so excited. They're playing um, it, uh, Jagger. They're playing it here in Calgary four days early. So I'm going to try and go to it. July 8th. I'm going to try and go. Wait, did, Trey, I know you're not what? a fan, but did you see Cinema Joe's review of it? No, I don't watch anything of Cinema Joe's. That guy's an asshole. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. But I do read his reviews on Letterboxd, and his review basically praised it to the high heavens for, like, four paragraphs. Which, yeah. when he does that, you're talking about a good movie. So, I've, I'm i more excited for this than I have been for a movie in a while. Dude, I'll give you a hey, uh, Cinema Joe, daughter. this... Hold on, hold on. This message goes out to Cinema Joe. <laughs> Cinema Joe, yeah, we may not be a huge podcast. We got, like, what? Like, 60 subs on YouTube, 2,500 average listeners on audio. Uh, We may not be huge, but we're getting there. Screw you, man. You didn't have to be... You could just say no. Don't be such an asshole. Life will be easier if you're not an asshole. 
So if you're <laughs> if you're listening to this or if you ever hear this, I just want to say, fuck you. You can go fuck yourself. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't like you. And even if I get famous and have to be nice to you, I'm not going to. I just don't like you. You suck. <laughs> Oh, All right, I'm yep. done. Shall Should we, we get into watch list? Let's get into the watch yeah. Oh, wait, no. Oh. Acolyte. So, uh, yeah. oh. if you don't know, <laughs> last week Buckle was up. the release of... I have not watched any of it. Because, again, none of us on here are huge Star Wars fans. Like, I like a few Star Wars con things. Like, I like Obi-Wan. I love The Last Jedi. I like A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. I think they're good. Mm -hmm. Mando season one is peak. That is also true. Again, not a huge Star Wars. And then it turned into side quest, the TV show. That (laughs) is also true. Not none of us are huge Star Wars fans. Okay. Yeah. Acolytes. I have not watched it, but I have read about what happens in the third episode of the Acolyte. This show is about. This episode is about this coven of witches who uses the Force to create this child. Um, who is force sensitive and has super high midichlorians similar. And I'm saying similar, not the same similar to the way Anakin was conceived. Anakin was conceived by the force. Like Shimi Skywalker was a virgin when she had Anakin. That's why he was like gonna, he was like the chosen one, you know, parallels to the Bible and all that shit. Uh, now, Star Wars fans are destroy are I've seen constant TikToks over and over. I know Evan's seen them. Jagger, you've probably seen them. Of people <laughs> saying, You're not a real Star Wars fan if you support any Disney Star Wars content. Disney has officially ruined Star Wars and all this bullshit. Mm-hmm. And they're like They've ruined what Anakin means. Anakin was supposed to be the only, like, chosen one, like, virgin birth. So they ruined Anakin, and, like, two women can't have a baby. So I'm just going to go on a rant real quick and tell all of you real, who think you're real Star Wars fans out there, why you're wrong. One, this is a sci-fi movie. These are aliens from, not from Earth. They are from other worlds. It is not that far out of the realm of possibility that they were, they were so biologically advanced that they no longer needed a male counterpart to have a child. That is not that far out of the side of the realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. Second of all, Anakin was before this, Anakin was not the only, I've researched all this. I got really into Star Wars so I can be right. It's (laughs) been difficult because it's also gosh darn boring. (laughs) <laughs> Second of all, Anakin was not the over uh, only virgin birth. Darth Plagueis, Darth Plagueis, you know, like, have you ever heard the tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise? That whole thing? He was also a virgin birth. So, no, Anakin was not special already. So this doesn't take away anything from him. So you can go calm down. Lastly, Disney did not ruin Star Wars. George Lucas ruined Star Wars. He came out with two pretty good Star Wars movies and then just dropped a bunch of shit. And then Disney, sure, they've come out with some stuff that isn't good, but they've also come out with some stuff that's really, really great. We got the Obi Show. We got the Mandalorian. I thought, I thought, I, I'm, I know this is a hot take. I thought The Last Jedi was excellent. I know this isn't a hot take. Force Awakens, pretty good. It's pretty fun. Kylo Ren, great character. Disney has pumped out more good quality Star Wars content than George Lucas ever did. So, yeah, if you're one fair. of those people, if you're one of those people, and I'm talking directly to you, if you're one of those people who says you're not a real Star Wars fan, if you support any Disney Star Wars content, stop listening to this podcast. I banish you. You're, you, that's not how <laughs> fandom should be. People can have their own opinions. It doesn't matter. Just let people have their own opinions. I don't care. Evan doesn't like The Last Jedi. Sure, I gave him a hard time for it, but that's because we're best friends. Best friends give each other a hard time. We can't let each other's egos get too big. Yeah, I do like The Force Awakens. Force Awakens is great. Again, Jagger doesn't like some of the Star Wars content. I give him a hard time, but he gives me a hard time about others, other things. You know? Yeah. That's just what we do. 
But at the end of the day, all three of us, we respect each other's opinions. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. We can understand Jagger where the other person is coming about, from. Uh, Harry Potter, but yeah, yeah. It'll be Jack, respectful. Fantasy, that kind of fantasy just isn't for Jagger, and that's okay. You know, me and Ev are gonna dog on him a little bit because we think Harry Potter is excellent, and Jagger <laughs> understands that. But he and knows. he's gonna dog on me for shit talking Twilight. Exactly. Yes. We're and getting there. We soon. all know that when we dog on each other, it comes from a place of love. You know? Yeah. So just let people have their own opinions. You need to calm down. All right. All you fucking incel Star Wars fans, calm the fuck <laughs> down. All right. You guys yeah. are the worst. You are easily the worst fandom of all time. The most toxic. Sure, some Marvel fans can suck, but not yeah. because they're constantly hating on everything Marvel. I'm a Marvel fan, and up until like last year, even the shit that Ant Man and the when Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania came out, I walked out of the theater going, "That wasn't bad. That was <laughs> it wasn't good, but it wasn't bad." You know, Marvel fans just enjoy anything Marvel. We don't give a shit. It's Marvel. <laughs> it ain't gonna be great, but we enjoy it. Star Wars fans. You need to calm the fuck down. All right? That concludes my rant. I just felt like I had to say that. Hell yeah. Star Wars fans. Can I... <laughs> Star... Nobody hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. Hell yeah. <laughs> Can I tack on to uh, another TikTok Please. brain rot rant that I saw this week of... God, dude. Uh, Some people the are boys... TikTok. They're just fucking idiots. Some people that watch <laughs> The Boys that are more right-wing conservative people realizing finally that this show has been making fun of them for the last four seasons. Yeah. And now they're finally getting Dude, angry about Eric it. Eric Kripke literally said, there's this new character. I haven't watched it yet. I'm waiting till it's all out so I can binge the entire season. Cause I would rather do that than wait week to week. Yeah, um, I'm starting from the beginning. So that when I get there, it's yeah. all out. there is a character. I saw this clip of a woman ranting about how all these uh like liberals were secret pedophiles like what the conservatives were saying and eric kripke <laughs> came out and blatantly said that he based this character off marjorie taylor green <laughs> they are so public about making fun of conservatives well, it hasn't and Trump it hasn't and, really been on the nose the first th three seasons dude, but this season it is, it's like so dude, obvious it's on what the they're nose doing enough that they should realize and then they made Frenchie bisexual which I mean he's already pretty much there the rest of the show that's not a big surprise who gives a shit but yeah. the, this scene I'll send you guys the TikTok of it because it's not a spoiler but yeah he was like I based this off Marjorie Taylor Greene and dude my TikTok feed was oh, the, and Rotten Tomatoes has season 4 of the boys user reviews at like 35% because people are review bombing it for being man the boys is woke as oh if God, the I entire show has so not much. been making fun of them the entire time it's insane yeah. Jagger I genuinely do think the boys will become one of your favorite superhero God, projects so I think you're gonna love oh my it. god I've seen I the first the three boys. seasons it is one of the most incredible shows oh you have seen it okay yes I've only seen the first so season I need to watch the rest the boys is amazing. Uh, dude the this the arc with Stormfront is some of the funniest shit I've ever seen Jager like when she starts saying is she the female up, hero that shows she, up she is and like Homelander female... gets all threatened of <laughs> no, well, kind of, but she's a Nazi tree. Like she was alive during Hitler's era, and she's an actual Nazi. Yeah, and she's like, we need to kill everybody but the white people, and start a, and it's called like uh, white genocide and all this shit. It's crazy. It is so funny, and even Homelander starts getting weirded out by it. It's hysterical. Like <laughs> he's like Homelander's like I have a fetish for breast milk, but I'm not dude, that fucking crazy. I, yeah. So I just want to say, uh, also these conservative people that have been watching the boys and they're like oh homelander's the fucking man you guys are fucking stupid and uh homelander yeah. is a fucking psychopath yeah uh this is you've, the been, same you've been being community. made fun of for the last three years and you only finally realized it so uh all right let's get into the watch list uh, Dude, oh let's, let's Dude, do we're shit. off to a begging start, man. Yeah. This is a great. <laughs> we episode. lost half our audience already today. Um, let's yeah. keep going. We don't Dude. care. Good riddance. <laughs> we don't want them listening to our podcast. Because I we don't get too political on here, but I'm 
pretty sure we're all pretty liberal. Very much so, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I mean, me and Jagger glazed, I saw the TV glow for about an hour and a half, and I don't think any conservatives are going to be doing that, so, yeah. Um, Oh, I've got the story to tell you guys later. Oh, man. What a story. Is it it like a podcast story or a post-podcast story? Post-podcast. It was. (laughs) Got it. It was a ride, yeah. Hell oh yeah. man, I'm real excited now. Um, Post podcast right. stories. That's uh, that's when you know it's real good. <laughs> uh, watch right. list. How many How movies many... do you guys have? I have fourteen, and seven of them are Harry Potter movies. So, what day are you guys starting from? Since I missed a couple, I'm a starting bit. from the fourteenth. Fourteenth. Hold on, let me see what I've got. I don't have much. One, two, three, four, 14th. five, six. I have one. Two, three, four. I've got 13. Okay. All right, and how much do you have, Evan? I have 14, but seven of them are the Harry Potter movies, so I'm just going to lump that into one. So it's like seven. Okay. Jagger, how about you do three, Evan, you do two, and I'll do one. Yeah, okay. Okay, my first three, I'll just bang out fast. Uh, I rewatched I Saw the TV Glow because now it's on Vudu, and I've already seen it twice since it came to Vudu. Um, <laughs> um, w. then I, yeah, yeah, I think we might be liberals. I mean, Jagger has seen <laughs> I Saw the TV Glow like four times already. <laughs> oh, God. Um, then I've got Jaws. Jaws is a banger. I've got that at a 99 out of 100. I think Jaws like is the OG, yeah, the 75. Dude, it's it's the OG. Evan, Evan doesn't love it, and that's fair. You know, I have it at a four star. A, it's a great movie. It is a great movie. You're an idiot for not having it for at least a four and a half. But like, uh, it's like the OG summer blockbuster. Yes. And so I want to start off the summer with that one. Yeah. I I'm assuming you've heard Pete Davidson's bit about Jaws. No. Wait. 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 Oh, wait, he wait, talks what? about the line where the. You, you, the Richard Dreyfuss's character, like the biologist, or the ocean, what do you call a guy who studies the ocean? Marine biologist. Oh, I think I do know what you're talking Marine about, but biologist. keep it going, I want to hear it again. Yeah, Pete Davidson <laughs> talks about how, like, mar- the Marine, he's like, this is, they, they catch the first shark, and they're like, we got it, we got the shark that's killing everybody. And Richard Dreyfuss is like, no, that's a Mako shark. And <laughs> There's a there's an extra and Pete Davidson how he talks about how he's pretty sure Steven Spielberg just like hired an uncle because the guy I'm not over exaggerating on inflection or tone here he goes a uh, what <laughs> it's, so, it's good. so funny and now that Pete Davidson pointed it out I can't not hear it and laugh he just goes a uh, what it's so <laughs> dumb. Oh, I forgot about that. I completely forgot he even did that bit. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Armor. Oh, man. I don't even think I noticed that on this watch. I'll have to go back into that one. Just go um, back to that scene because it is gold. It is so funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> He's oh so zesty God. with it, dude. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, My next one. X, I'm getting ready for Maxine, dude. As soon as tickets are available for that movie, they are gone by me. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, are very you good a Jalo fan, Jager? Yes, very much so. We need to get Trey on some Argento films. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, my next. I want to watch. Dude, uh, you gave so, like mo- so much. You watch so much Shutter horror films, and you haven't ran into an Argento film. It's crazy. Not yet. <laughs> um, I have seen the first ten minutes of Opera, though. Oh, that's a good movie. <laughs> Cinema too. better than Suspiria. I haven't uh, seen Suspiria. I Holy not. shit, that's crazy. Have you seen um, the remake? No. Because and that's I've quite I really both. like the remake. Are they? They're very different. <laughs> yeah, but are they both? Would you say they're both good? I have Suspiria. I think I have both of them at four and a half. Okay. You can't really compare them. They're completely different. Yeah. Jagger, the, remake the remake of Suspiria crazy. has six acts. It is very six unconventional. Acts? It's very unconventional. It's long. But it's Tilda not Swing like plays that four long. different characters. Yeah. It's two and a half hours long. 
and Tilda Swinton plays like four different characters, like two men and two women. It's ridiculous. It's peak. Yeah, that movie. And Tom York from Radiohead does the soundtrack. Uh, the yes. score. Oh, it's it's so good. And um, there's some grady great body horror in it. Yeah, really. And um, and a lot of boobies. Yeah, a lot of boobies. <laughs> um, so that's always the W. Speaking of liberal, my first watch. Also, I saw the TV glow. I bought this <laughs> shit the moment it came out. Yes. <laughs> Immediately, I woke up at three thirty to go to work. The first thing I did, I bought. I saw the TV glow. Came home from work, watched it. Um, yeah, it's cinema. <laughs> it's peak. Five stars. It's my favorite movie of the year. No contest. And then, uh, I know you love this movie, Trey. I watched Throne of Blood. Yes. Fucking. Is cinema. that the Kurosawa one? Yeah. The Kurosawa yeah, that's Macbeth a great movie. movie. That sure, where Jagger got that. me to watch that. Sick movie. Uh, Macbeth is my favorite Shakespeare story. Um, yeah, it, it was sick. I loved it. Give it four yeah. and a half. Uh, Trey, what's your first one? First one. I watched a horror movie um, with, what's her face? Yvonne uh, Strahovski. I don't know if you guys have seen Chuck. But she plays like the love interest. Um, Jagger, have you seen Chuck? I feel like that's right up your alley. I don't. I don't think I've seen Chuck, but I don't know. <laughs> it's, good. it's a TV Chuck. show. It has oh, uh, no. Zachary Levi. It's really funny, and it's, it's really. It's like a spy TV show. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, you should check it out. Um, but yeah, watch that. It's called He's Out There. It's like a. Uh, contained like slasher horror something kind of, similar to like uh like the strangers or like Fr- a friday the ter- 13th movie or when a stranger calls something like that where like they're staying at a house and a serial killer is coming after them and torturing them and all that shit um gotcha. i thought it was all right it was enjoyable i didn't hate my time with it some cool gore um good characters yvonne strahovski gives a good performance um, it's definitely worth a watch. It's on, uh, I watched it on Prime if you guys want to check it out, but it's also on Freebie, Pe- Peacock, and Tubi. Nice. All right. Shout out, Tubi. Three Dude, stars. Dude, I don't know if you saw it, but I watched Strangers Chapter 1. What'd you think? I hated it. I thought it was awful. Except for the scene when the Airbnb owner comes back to the house. That is <laughs> one of the funniest scenes in the year. I laughed my ass off at that show. Ah, that movie I don't sucks. know. I just had... I had enough fun with it that I gave it two and a half. I really didn't mind. Um, I gave right. it once there. I, I, I feel like now I'm sort of asking for the smoke with this review, but I gave Shrek three Uh-oh. and a half. Um, That's fair. Okay. That's, I'm going to defend the you. The first Shrek? Yeah. I do think there's a pretty good amount of nostalgia that plays into everybody's five star ratings like i watched that as a kid evan watched that as a kid i mean shrek 2 obviously clears it but shrek 1 is still true shrek 2 is a five star and three and a half isn't a negative review you know you still enjoyed it i'm gonna tell you something wild this was my first watch of shrek ever have you seen the second one no this is my first time ever seeing a shrek i think Holy shit, dude. Shrek 2 is cinema. Um, yeah, Evan. Now it's to you, right? Uh, yeah. I watched six Harry Potter movies in a row. And then I watched After Earth, which we'll be talking about on Friday. So I'll give a quick little, uh, hello. There we go. Oh, yeah. We're yeah. back. Uh, you just yeah, down After for Earth a is dog shit. There is one se- there is one single scene in After Earth that is cool, and the rest of the movie sucks. This is maybe Will Smith's worst performance. He spends the entire movie staring at the screen. Jaden Smith, his accent, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but it's one of the weirdest accents I've ever heard in my entire life. It's awful. It doesn't look that bad. I give it one star because the visuals aren't awful. Um... And there's a really cool wingsuit scene about halfway through. Really cool scene. Uh, it's shit. Yeah, it's really bad. We'll talk about yeah. it more on Friday. <laughs> it's shit. Yeah. All right, is it is it my turn? <laughs> What's your next one, Trey? Yeah, it's your turn. Next one for me. 
is part of the franchise that I will be glazing for the rest of the watch list section. So, you, I'm a big fan of Lord of the Rings. I had never seen the Hobbit movies. I've seen Lord of the Rings a few times. They're peak. You know, we all know this. Except Jagger, apparently. But yeah. that's okay. Again, <laughs> Jagger just doesn't like fantasy. Well, we don't know, because he won't log them. We don't know, Trey, right? Because he won't log them. We don't know. He could be hiding like a, like a guilty pleasure. Who like knows? He has them all at five stars. Yeah. He's like, if I could give me six, I would. Um, we'll never know. <laughs> and a few months back, I got wrecked. Uh, the first Hobbit movie in the Real Talk raffle, film raffle. Um, watched that. Um, had a blast. You know, any these movies obviously don't hold a candle to Lord of the Rings. Um, but in my words... Any time spent in Middle Earth is time well spent. You know? I'm never going to watch a movie that takes place in Middle Earth and have a poor time. Because Peter Jackson is just the GOAT. Uh, he's slowly becoming one of my favorite directors. Yeah. Um, have you seen like Dead he... Alive yet? Or... Which one? Dead it's Alive. A, the Lovely Bones? It, 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 Dead Alive. It's got two different names. Dead Alive and something else. It's a horror film. It's Brain got... Dead. Brain Dead, Dead Alive, yeah, it's the same. No, I haven't watched it yet. It's fucking insane. You'll love it. It's on my watch it list. Used to, it used to have the world record for most amount of blood in a movie. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, first, I'm going to talk about Desolation of Smaug. Uh, this movie is great. You know, uh, Thor and Oakenshield. Richard Armitage is Thor and Oakenshield. Might be one of the coolest characters in fiction. I would follow him into battle any day. <laughs> you know? Uh, Martin Freeman as Bilbo is the goat. Uh, we cut, we start to get the seeds here of, uh, seeing, um, how Sauron came to power, um, again, you know, um, yeah. we get Benedict Cumberbatch voice performing Sauron and Smaug, who, which I think he kills it doing both. Um, Banner Dragon Cumber Smaug. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, oh. We get, I mean, you get appearances in these last two Hobbit movies from Lord of the Rings characters like Legolas, the badass. Yeah. Uh, every shot is just Orlando Bloom going. <laughs> <laughs> That's every shot. Him yep. just staring off into the distance with blue eyes. Uh, but yeah, this is probably my second favorite of the Hobbit movies. I really I really enjoy this one. Um, four and a half stars. Nice. Um, so now it's me, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, my next one is a short film called The Branham Boat, uh, which I gave half a star. This is my post episode story the post podcast story is about this movie uh, i have to please ask that anyone listening to this podcast do not watch this short and if you do do not support it the person behind it is a bad person um like a, did, you a learn, real... did you learn this before or after the fact uh i learned this more or less before which is why i ran in and gave it half a star and gave it like the worst review ever but the movie itself sucks um <laughs> I would like you to know that afterwards, this person sort of came and attacked me about it and questioned my moral compass. Uh, after a couple he came of really, where? Uh, into the comments of my review and questioned my moral compass. Uh, to are which they I still up? Him. Um, are his comments still up? Uh, I screenshotted them, so I'll t I, like I said, I'll tell you afterwards. But if you look and you read my thing, you'll sort of get a grasp on who this person is. If I'm saying that. Um, yeah, dude. Bad guy. <laughs> All right. I'll explain later. Yeah. But yeah, What's do not support one? this. Um, my next one is Philosopher's Stone, which I uh, gave three stars. I don't like fantasy stuff. And yeah, not a fan. Except Twilight. Except Twilight. Twilight's peak. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get to, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. 
after uh, After Earth, I watched some cinema, some cool guy shit. Watched Deathly Hallows Part Two. Had to skip forward in the old uh, Harry Potter uh, watch because I watched one through five, and then uh, we were supposed to record yesterday. But Trey was busy, so we skipped it. So I was like, okay, well, we got to watch Deathly Hallows Part 2. So we watched Deathly Hallows Part 2. Uh, it's cinema. It's absolute cinema. It's it's like uh, f- 10 minutes of story and then a war for the rest of the movie. It's nuts. Uh, visually, it's insane. Performances are phenomenal. We'll talk about it more uh, after the watch list because that's our review for the week. Um, it's phenomenal. It's it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's so good. Uh I love it. And then I watched Tampopo. Uh, this is a little raffle wreck from Ka- Cash, I think. Yeah, shout out Cash. That's pretty usual. Um, uh, Tampopo is a film about loving food, and it's a film about how a love of food can inspire love in your own life. It's phenomenal. It's entertaining. It's wholesome. It's funny and weird. It, it, it's just amazing. I loved it so much. I gave it five stars. This is a movie meant for me. I love food. I love cooking. So I knew it was like destined to love it. I watched this with Ben, Trey, and both of us loved it so much. Uh, yeah, Tan yeah. Popo is phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Love it. Watch it. it. It'll put you in a good mood. It's It's awesome. And it's got some of the weirdest sex scenes I've ever seen in my entire life. There's a prolonged sequence where uh, a man and woman crack a raw egg yolk into their mouth and pass it back and forth while kissing without trying to break it. It's very uncomfortable. It's very weird. Uh, lots of lots of weird food sex, but uh, I loved it. It's it's amazing. Yeah, Tampa was sick. Five I mean, have, have you seen the Doom Generation? No, but they're playing it at the Globe, my uh, retro theater. Should I go? I, I'm going to watch it tonight. I hear mixed things, so oh, no, I'll get back know. to you on that. Yeah. What was your next one, Trey? Sorry, I'm tracking down this guy's letterbox account. Dude, he's weird. Read his reviews of Clockwork Orange, Mulholland Drive, and Birdman. Okay. For context, Evan, he accused Mulholland Drive of only having lesbian sex scenes because David Lynch got off on that. That's it. What? He said there's no reason to have lesbian sex in a movie unless the director likes it. That's what we're dealing uh, with. Here. That's crazy. And on uh, a separate occasion, he said... Oh, wait, wait, wait. If I may interject. And yeah. then I'll... That's the way. Yeah, on a review of A Clockwork Orange, he said, uh, and I quote, Raping is bad, but Stanley Kubrick makes it look cool. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, so my next one is... <laughs> Sorry, this kid, man. Uh, <laughs> my next one is Battle of the Five Armies. This is visually the worst Lord of the Rings movie. There's some scenes in here that look rough, but it's still awesome. Four and a half. It's great. I cried. For sure. Uh, We get to see the love story of a dwarf and an elf. It's amazing. Keely is the goat. Uh, That's all I have to say on that. Gregor, you want to take your next three? Uh, My next three? My next one. I don't don't know. How many do we each have left? I have one left. I have seven. Yeah, do three. Okay. Uh... Twilight, 100 out of 100. That's it. That's the first one. Uh, the yeah. second one, Twilight New Moon, 96 out of 100. Those movies are incredible. Uh, and then I watched I Saw the TV Glow again um, because I realized I had not really put up too much of like a Pride Month-based review. So I wanted to throw one out oh, yeah. for I Saw the TV Glow, so I watched it again. Sh- really good. Shut up, Pride. Evan? Uh, yeah. Are you looking Sorry. at this kid's letterbox too? Yep. Uh yeah. Next, I watch. I rewatched Nope because we were having a conversation about it, and um, this is my lowest rated Jordan Peele film. Very hot take, I know. I think it's um, I think it's a good movie. I think that the plot is easily the least interesting of his three films. 
visually hoyt van hoytema cooked so fucking hard the i always respect when a movie can look good like at nighttime and there's a lot of shots at night that just look insane like it's so well shot uh like jean jacket is looks insane the abduction scene is incredible it's the best scene in the movie i wish it was longer um I think Daniel Kaluuya's performance is not amazing. I think he's a little too stoic for his own good. Um, I really like it, but I don't think it's as good as Get Out or Us. Again, I think the visuals are insane. I don't think the score, or the the soundtrack, I don't think Needle Drops are as good. Uh, the score is still really good, though. Um, Kiki Palmer kills it. Steven Young's great. Um... I think it's a bit too long. I give it a four star. I still think it's a really good movie, but yeah. There's not quite as good. And then... What's my next one? Half-Blood Prince. Uh, Half-Blood Prince, I'm kind of split on because the first act is a little sleepy time TE inducing. And then it really ramps up. And the third act of Half-Blood Prince is some of the best Harry Potter in the entire series. It's incredible when they start hunting horcruxes like you know what i mean trey the the moment that harry Are we talking takes about harry the, potter now i'm talking about <coughs> haplet prince the moment oh. that harry drinks the the luck juice yeah oh my god it, comedy gold yeah the moment he drinks that juice it it is it, it's like yep this is fucking amazing because it's really entertaining and it leads into him digging into Slugworth's uh, psyche and finally cracking open all of his secrets, which leads into a whole mystery treasure hunt. And it's fucking awesome. And it's the, the last half hour, super disturbing, really intense, uh, sad, depressing. It's, it's amazing. The third act of half Blood Prince is again, yeah, it's some of my favorite Harry Potter ever. I just think yeah. that the first uh, act is is not Harry amazing. Potter high on Felix Felicis is comedy gold. Yeah, it's it's hysterical. <laughs> They're like, okay, remember, Slugworth goes to bed at this time and has dinner Slughorn. at this time. Slughorn, thank you. And Harry's like, I think we're gonna go to Hagrid's tonight. <laughs> I just have a really good feeling about it. Yeah. Dude, the shot of Aragorn, or, yeah, uh, nope, not Aragorn. Er Fuck, what's, what's the spider's name? Aragog. Aragog, Aragog. dead. Aragorn is Dude, son Aragog, of Arathorn. Yeah, Aragog, dead, terrifying shit. Oh, God, I can't. Uh, Aragog is a very large spider jagger Ooh, that you meet God. in Chamber of Secrets. Um, he's an, a pretty scary character. Um yeah i i really loved the second half of half blood prince it's a four and a half it's uh yeah it's pretty fucking awesome it's a four and a half it's and it's my second lowest rated harry potter film if that's any indication <laughs> okay yeah uh all right trey what's your my last last one? last one harry potter and the fellowship of the ring uh, harry potter and the fellowship try that of the again ring. What did I say? Harry, Harry Potter, Potter and Fellowship of the Ring. Oh, fuck me. Uh, Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, this Hell movie yeah. is peak. I'm watching the extended editions for the first time. Um, it there, it's incredible. I love the characters. Uh, Aragorn is him. I wish I was Aragorn. Um, the descendant of Isildur. Uh, it just makes me, it makes my, the nerd in me happy to watch these movies. It's the best There's, world building ever. Yeah. The Orakai, the Urukai are crazy. Um, yeah, I'll talk about Two Towers and Return of the King next episode, but I will say this, Treebeard, truly the goat. There's these things yeah. in Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers, Jagger, called Ents. They are known as shepherds of the forest because the elves like brought the trees alive and learned that taught them how to communicate with each other and how to move around. And the Ents 
are basically they look like trees but they're these huge beings that basically take care of the forest and protect it and all that shit and there's the leader of the ents his name is Treebeard, and he is a dog dude he starts yeah, talking about the ent the wives and he's like yes we lost all the ent wives and mary's like oh i'm so sorry for your loss how did they die and he's like no they didn't die we literally lost them we don't know where they are have you seen any of the <laughs> ent wives and they're like uh no and we're like and he's like and they're like what do they look like and he's like it was so long ago i can't remember it's just goofy man Treebeard is the goat and then they storm uh isengard and tear down the walls it's fucking awesome Shut up, Galadriel. jagger it's just galadriel yeah kate blanchett yeah yeah dude and when she goes like demon mode on frodo yeah so scary cinema <laughs> yeah Lord of the Rings. Is God, scary. I just love nerd nerding out and talking about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. I want to go live in the Shire. No, I'd rather live in Rivendell. Yeah. With all the elves. <laughs> and live Tyler. And live Tyler. <laughs> but yep. only like Arwen. Only Liv Lord Tyler. of the Rings. Yeah. Not leftovers, yeah. Liv Tyler. No, She's crazy. Not. Terrifying. Dude, yeah. season two finale of The Leftovers, where she basically rapes that yeah. one guy. Holy Terrifying. cow. Yeah. That shit's Awful. crazy. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Peak as fuck. All right, I'm just going to go through my last three because I'm yeah. not going to count Children of Heaven. Um, the Deliverance of a Suitcase is a short film made by a 15-year-old trans girl that asked me if I would watch it, so I said absolutely, um, because they supported um, my short film, so I watched theirs, I give it a three and a half. I think it's really good, I think I see a lot of potential there. Um, then I watched Twilight Saga Eclipse, Twilight Saga Eclipse is a 96 out of 100, um, and then I watched Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 1, uh, which I gave a 95 out of 100, it's my lowest rated uh, Twilight movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny i don't like that or wait you haven't seen it try right i've only seen the first one but i've read all the books okay yeah i don't like the fact that um jacob basically married a newborn that's not cool yeah um, imprinting Dude, and on the a newborn. cgi on that baby is fucking crazy <laughs> <laughs> that baby looks like a demon <laughs> Well, yeah, what a what a scene that was. As soon as that I baby in comes my head, out looking like a full grown man, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Yeah, that is um, that shit is so odd. That was yeah, that a movie, choice. That movie was a lot more wild than I thought it was going to be for a PG thirteen movie too. So I'll give it that credit. It's a good Dude. movie. Dude, it's so weird. It's so I weird. love that. The director, like, saw that and was like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, someone Evan, had have to you have seen approved that, that baby. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. it's wild. Unfortunately, I have. Yeah. Breaking Dawn um, Part 2 tomorrow. So excited. Yeah, it's crazy how you watch this cool battle and then none of it actually happened. Uh, that's absolute cinema. Whoa. Spoilers, man. Spoilers. <laughs> Yeah. Evan doesn't care. Evan Dude, does we've been care. yapping. We're an hour in and we're yeah, not even to our reviews. I gotta yet. work tomorrow. We gotta we gotta fucking get going. Evan's getting sweepy. Um, I'm getting a little sweepy. Um All right. Dagger. All right. Uh I, do you want us to take it? you off screen while we talk Deathly Hollows? Wait, I got a couple more I got uh, two more. Oh really shit. quick. Okay. But yeah, you can take me off now. It's fine. I watched All right. twenty five minutes of Avatar the Last Airbender. It's shit. I'll finish it tomorrow. Um, and then I watched Family Guy presents something, something, something dark side. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah. Agreed. The Family Guy Star Wars specials are amazing. All right. Let's talk Harry Potter. Let's talk Deathly Hallows yes. Part 2. The culmination. First of all, let's get something out of the way. J.K. Rowling, yeah. bad person. Awful person. Hey, J.K., Awful go person. fuck yourself. Trans rights. Shout out Pride yeah. Month. Uh, yeah, go fuck yourself. I love you, Let Harry Potter. Be. I hate you. Also, yeah. it, it is crazy that J.K. Rowling got away with naming these characters what Dude, she named them. The, because the only one... Asian character 
In her name the is Cho entire... Chang. Cho Dude, Chang. What the fuck? It's crazy. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's yeah. so crazy. It's insane. Uh, you and then you would expect Dean, who's one of the few black people in yeah. this, to be like she's like, and this is Jamiroquai, you yeah. know? And then she's yeah. also just like, no, this is Dean Thomas, the yeah. whitest name she could think yeah. of. It's insane. Uh, uh, so yeah, let's talk about first Harry Potter's franchise as a whole, real quick, and then Deathly Hollows Part Two, uh, yeah. specifically. Uh, Harry Potter off. as a franchise is excellent. Um, it's exciting. Um, if you separate it from the books, if you just look at them as movies, yeah, we're talking they're about great. The movies here. If you compare them to the books, though, they're utter shit. <laughs> Not all of them. All of them. <laughs> okay, it's been a while since I read the books. Really, the only that one that holds a candle to the books is Deathly Hollows Part One, because they leave the least yeah. amount out. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're long books. Like, there's unfortunately things are gonna get cut out. Um, yeah, exactly. Thankfully, but we're not here to talk about the books. We're here to talk about the movies and how hard they rip. Yeah, I would love to kick it off talking about Philosopher's Stone because. This is the start of Harry Potter. It is the most kid movie of the Harry Potter films. And still, yeah. it's not really that uh, much of like a children's movie. I do think okay. it's really funny that everyone gasses up. I think it's so funny that they gas up Harry as such an insane wizard. And he does not use a single lick of magic in this entire movie. <laughs> Dude. Harry would have died. Harry and Ron both would have died so soon with the, it without Hermione. Dude, I hate that fucking there, it, scene of where of Ron in the Devil like, Snare. It would have been like two movies, and they'd be like, "Yeah, Harry and Ron both died." Yeah, idiots. Because Dude, they I, are I idiots. hate. I hate that scene of Ron in the Devil Snare, and it's Hermione's like, "You just gotta relax," and she falls through, and she's fine, and Ron is like tweak it out <laughs> and then harry falls through and he's fine and ron is still tweaking out something i learned and she's like rewatch. relax ronald yeah i mean damn i kind of impression Sto yeah you killed that shit <laughs> philosopher stone gave us maybe the best scene of all time no ron you can't what's wrong he's going to sacrifice himself <laughs> not me not Hermione. Not Hermione. Yo. Yo. <laughs> no, it's peak. It's absolutely simple. I love the chess scene. Dude, the chess scene, visually insane. It looks so good. The anim like the animations, the design on yeah. all the chess characters, sick as fuck. Um, it is How such terrified awesome... were you of that final scene? Like his showdown oh. with Voldemort at the end when you were a kid? How yeah. scary was that? It's, I used to have it's nightmares. Scarier yeah it's scary like and then dude the the way it still kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies when he touches his face and he just stops oh. moving and collapses yeah. terrifying dude yeah dude oh it it's such a great introduction and i think it really ramps up at the end when it's just harry and i don't even remember the professor's uh, name professor quarrel quarrel thank you <laughs> dude i just yep. watched all these movies um Dude, I'm a encyclopedia of characters' names. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, Professor it's Quirrell. It's super... dude. I remember yeah. characters, movies, everything. It's fun because, like, you don't really suspect anybody in the school because everyone's kind of weird. And, yeah, Snape's yeah. A, a weirdo. I think the Quidditch scene looks phenomenal for how old that movie is. It is so much fun. And they it, look it, phenomenal consistently throughout the franchise. Yeah, they they look phenomenal for each eight, like time period. I think uh, the Goblet of Fire, like at the beginning, when it's Victor Crumb just popping off, yeah. sick as hell. Um, but yeah, I love Philosopher's Stone. It's it's a movie that I have a lot of nostalgia for, but I still think it is a super entertaining movie, and I think the pacing is immaculate through every single Harry Potter movie. They're all long. They're all over two hours. And 
they blaze past. They feel like a yeah. 90 minute movie. Um, Chamber of Secrets is the most underrated Harry Potter film. It is an excellent mystery film. It's got who's opened the Chamber of Secrets? Who's writing blood on the walls? What's going on with Tom Riddle's diary? What's going on with uh, this and that? And it's just like a really intriguing mystery. Harry speaking uh, parcel tongue. Parcel tongue. Such a great scene such a great scene because it yeah. puts everybody against harry i think it's really entertaining i don't well, know that's like that's like the first time in the franchise we truly see how alone he is yeah and how powerful he is because that's a rare ability yeah and i mean you learn further down the line it's because he shares like blood dna with voldemort but like yeah well he's um, more crux yeah yeah it, it's phenomenal i have chamber of secrets at a five I, I i fucking love it um i don't know if you have anything you want to say about it no okay uh on to prisoner of Azkaban. i feel like we just rattle through these um prisoner of Azkaban, what's what's been said that or what like what to say that hasn't already been said it's fucking amazing yeah. it is so entertaining the time travel aspects the first time i saw this movie um grin ear to ear like it is so fun hagrid is the absolute goat um true hermione is so weird in this movie and you're like what the fuck is going on with hermione it's funny it it feels a bit more serious oh yeah oh oh with Sirius Black, who is the most noted <laughs> character in Harry Potter history, next to the second most, or the first most goaded character, who was introduced in this movie, Remus Lupin. Who yes. teaches Harry the fucking Patronus charm, and that scene of him unleashing the Patronus is the coolest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. It, I, I just love this okay, movie. Okay, let me ask you. Let me yeah. ask you. What would your Patronus be? A beaver. Shut up, Canada. Dude, give me a big beaver. <laughs> yeah. That's sick. Yeah, like flap the tail to push away the Dementors. Yeah. But that'd like the... Tough. Dude, yeah, that'd be... What about you? Oh, an orangutan. Hell yeah. That's yeah. hard. That's hard. Yeah, um... dude. Imagine <laughs> that. A, a, like a 10-foot tall orangutan just running at all these Dementors. Hell yeah! Um, the first scene crazy. of the Dementors on on the Hogwarts Express is so great. <clears throat> we didn't yeah, talk about how that, amazing that scared me as a kid. Oh, same dude. The car scene in Chamber of Secrets when they steal the flying car so much fun. Um, so good. The Whomping Willow gets straight disrespected in every single Harry Potter movie, and I feel bad for it. <laughs> yeah. The climax of Prisoner of Azkaban is excellent. The True. reveal of uh, Wormtail uh, as the rat, like the team up with everybody watching Snape get fucking <laughs> expelling off us. Oh, it's so good. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Well, one, when Jagger watches them, we can do a Harry Potter episode and get a bit, bit deeper into the, the bag. Yeah. Um, Goblet of Fire, I think, is one of the most entertaining movies, specifically for the trials. I think that the rest of the movie is pretty flat and slow. I don't. I hate the Victor Crumb Hermione romance. I fucking hate it. It's super weird. Um, but let me tell you, watching Harry chase a dragon or on his broom. Throughout yeah, the I'll entirety that. That of scene Hogwarts, is sick. scene is hard as shit. It is so good. That's cool, guys. Oh, it's such a great scene. Um, like the the trials are the standouts. I love that, and I think the the second trial in the water when he comes out and it's like he saved both of them, and it's like I came in last. No, you came in second last. It's just like a really hype moment. Um, yeah. and you get the reveal of Voldemort, like. Wormtail straight cutting his hand off. The the last like ha 20 30 minutes of Goblet of Fire is super intense and it really kicks off the like darkness 
that, that you rest. That, that's like when that scene in the graveyard is like when the whole franchise like switches and yeah. like that's much darker. Mm-hmm. Like they're no longer kids' movies. Yeah, and that's my boy. <laughs> That's my son, dude. That scene is so unironic, like ironically funny, because the dude. music is so happy. Oh, I hate, I hate watching it. it. Makes me so sad. And you're like Cedric laughing Diggory, though because it's so goofy, goat. dude. Cedric is such a goat. Ugh. He was done dirty, dude. One thing that Goblet of Fire has that Order of the Phoenix doesn't have is Sirius Black in the fireplace and his face in the coals. That's so true. cool. And Order of the Phoenix is just like a flaming head in the fireplace. I love the coals. Really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, the last, like, 20 minutes of Goblet of Fire is fucking amazing. Um, Order of the Phoenix, uh, we get introduced to, as my girlfriend likes to call her, Dolores Cuntbridge. Uh, maybe Dude, the most devious whoa, character. Whoa! Yeah. I didn't know we were saying that word today. Dude, Holy Dolores cow. is an absolute That is bitch. the only... That is the only time I will allow the use of that word on this podcast. Yeah, Dolores is a menace. An absolute menace to society. I don't uh, know who gives that performance, but yeah. I don't know what her name is, but she kills it, dude. Dude, it's insane. Most, like, top five most hated characters in fiction. Though, when she kicks Professor Trelawney out of Hogwarts, heartbreaking. Yeah. Dude, she just wanted to look at cups. Like, come on. What are you doing come here? Come on, bro. It's, it's just so amazing. Um, her performance is phenomenal. Dude, when she is like, Harry, come to detention and write lines for me, and he starts writing lines and they're engraved into his skin, like, that's insane. And yeah. at the end, when she goes to use the Cruciatus curse on him, like, that's crazy. And mm-hmm. then, I mean, they're like, take take her into the Forbidden Forest and just piece her up with the, the, the Minotaurs and the goat. Centaurs. Can... Come Centaurs, on, Evan. Thank you. Sorry. You need to be more of a nerd. I know. The Minotaur <clears throat> is from Greek mythology. Yeah. Half bull, Fuck that half up. man. Uh, yeah. Order of the Phoenix, I think, is kind of slept on. I think the rumor requirements stuff is really entertaining. It kind of feels yeah. like a filler movie until the end. Oh, yeah. Um, All the stuff at the Ministry is sick. Yeah. It, visually, the Ministry is insane. It's like all these pitch black tiles and they're running through the the like hallways with all the globes of the prophecies sick as shit yeah. you get the showdown with all the death eaters it's amazing serious black yeah. death is heartbreaking and let's talk about how hype fred and george's exit oh my Hogwarts god is. yeah the fireworks it's going everywhere it's so good oh, dude sick fred and george best characters in harry potter yeah goaded absolutely goaded when they they ah oh, they're, they're so good um, the showdown between Dumbledore and Voldemort at the end is absolute cinema. It is. Oh yeah, because everyone is the... like so terrified of him, and then Michael Gambon just shows up and is like, "You shouldn't have come yeah. here tonight, Tom. They are on their way." Yeah, I love that. He and you're just like, Tom. "Oh, it's hard as shit. It's so hard, um, dude." I, I, I wish that we got more showdowns like that, and. Because they look so fucking good. They're yeah. insane. You got the snake and the phoenix, and it's just sick as hell. I love the scene in... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Art of the Phoenix. When the Ministry comes to like send Dumbledore to Azkaban, and he's like, you're under the assumption that I'll go willingly. And he goes, Poof! and Fox comes in and teleports him away. It's sick as hell. I'm pretty sure that's Chamber. No, it's way later. It's it's six or five because or six. What what's the reason they're arresting? Oh, Umbridge it comes order in. The, it's the Order of the Phoenix because yeah. they're like they find out Dumbledore like takes the blame for the, uh, for the club. Yeah, yeah, it's sick as shit. Michael Gambon kills it. He's so and iconic. Kingsley R.I.P. Kingsley yeah. Shacklebolt is like. You have to give it to him, Professor. He's got flair. <laughs> yeah, dude, that scene is awesome. It's <laughs> so awesome. Um, yeah. yeah, Order of the Phoenix, is. It, it feels like a filler movie, but it is really entertaining. The room requirement bits are excellent. They're really fun and hype. Neville pops off. 
we love seeing Neville go crazy. Um, yeah. But then we get to Half Blood Prince, which I just watched yesterday. The best yeah, this... Harry Potter movie. I'll let you talk more on this one. I'll I'll say a quick piece. I think it it's a bit again. These movies are ex- ep- expertly paced. Really entertaining. The opening scene nuts when, with the bridge and all the shit. It's cool as hell. Also, mm-hmm. Order of the Phoenix with him and Dudley in that tunnel. Sick as hell. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Half Blood Prince, I think it stumbles a little bit until the last 45 minutes, which is like half the movie. It's not, it's one of the shorter Harry Potter films. Mm hmm. And it's just electric. It is so intense. You're on the edge of your seat. You're like, oh, this is how we take down Voldemort. Like, this is the beginning of the end. And you're ramping up. You're like, holy fucking shit, it's time. It's so hype. I love it. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to retract my statement. It is the second best Harry Potter movie. The next one is the best Harry Potter movie. And I will explain why. Yeah, well. But. Yeah. This movie rips. This is easily the darkest of the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. Um, we get Harry slicing up Draco with the Sectum Sempra spell, which is sick. It's like the best scene in the entire uh, saga. This is, this is, I feel, the movie in which Harry feels the most alone. Yeah. Even though he has this relationship with Dumbledore, like, he's always felt alone. Like, he has Hermione and Ron, but he's always felt alone. Um, this is where he feels at his most alone. Uh, yeah. The final fight between him and Snape is gut-wrenching. Yeah. Um, and Like, you dare use my own spells against God, me, so Potter? Good. Oh my so... God, dude. Snape, Potter. crazy, bro. But- dude. Maybe the best Snape line. Turn to f- page 492. <laughs> Dude, I love it. Yeah. Oh, uh, so Alan Rickman, another RIP. Rest in peace, yeah. Um, Dude, uh, anytime I watch Harry Potter, I have to wear something with sleeves, and I'll, like, pull the sleeves, like, halfway up my hand, and I'll just be like... You know, yeah. that's how he rolls. Hit, hit Beth in the back of the head with a journal. Yeah. Dude, I love the scene in Order of the Phoenix when he's tri- Jesus Christ. Uh, that's not a funny joke. You can- <laughs> Jesus Christ. You can hear that. It's because he does that to Harry and Ron. Oh, I know. Um, but when he's I'm not making Harry, a joke about domestic violence. No, of course not. <laughs> uh, when he's training Harry to like lock his mind up from Voldemort. Oh, it's so sick. I love Snape and Harry. Yeah, and you get like more like information on why Snape hates Harry so much. Yeah. Because of his relationship with his father and yeah. how Harry's father was just a massive prick in school. Yeah. Like, I love James, cool character. If I was in high school with him, I'd be like, yeah, that guy fucking sucks. He's yeah. the worst. <laughs> He's just an asshole. Uh but that's probably because I relate more to Snape's school experience than his. Yeah. Um, I was the nerdy weirdo kid. Uh, um, yeah, dude, I'm with you, brother. Uh, what's up, brother? Um, but yeah, half blood (laughs) Prince just rips, man. What do you have it at? Five stars. Hell yeah, I have it at four and a half. I raised it substantially on my rewatch. It's so good. I raised it from a three and a half to a four and a half. Yeah, it's so good. This is my fourth time watching them since I've got Letterboxd, and my ratings have fluctuated so much. Um, yeah. Okay. Deathly Hallows Part 1, I don't have a lot to say about it because I haven't rewatched it in like six months, and I'll be watching it oh, tomorrow. Oh, you didn't? What, you and Beth didn't watch it? We have not had the time. We're going to watch it tomorrow. Okay. It's the last one we need to watch. So. Yeah. Um. I enjoy it. I think Ron is un- insufferable in this movie. Uh, mm. Almost as bad as Goblet of Fire when he's just being a little pussy bitch and he's like, Dean told See, Seamus to think... tell you to tell this. Oh, it's... The oh, way he's God. insufferable 
in both movies is very different and it's much more understandable yeah in part one yeah oh of course because it's because of the horcrux it's like yeah well and they're like on the run they're not making any progress with the horcruxes you know he ron hasn't oh tell beth hi for me um ron hasn't uh oh Ron hasn't, like, seen any of his family and doesn't know yeah. if they're okay in months. So, like, I understand him. Yeah. I, I feel like... Let me say, 40% of your love for this movie comes from the scene of Harry and Hermione dancing. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say... I know you love Harry that scene. I know you love that scene. The Horcrux one? <laughs> Whoa! Ye- I remember watching that as a teenager and I was like, should I be watching this? Is this, is this a good movie to watch? Like when I'd watch that movie, I'd like pray that one of my parents didn't walk in. I was like, this is really hot. What the hell? <laughs> Harry Potter's not supposed to be hot. What's happening? Uh, but yeah, I mean, I love the ca- you. This is the movie with easily the most character development. It has the most limited amount of action, but the action it does have is a blast. Yeah, third uh, act is brutal. Yeah, but I just love because I love these characters so much, and this movie is really about them as characters and all the like. Again, the character building I think is yeah. excellent in this film, and also that's why it's best my final one. shot of the entire series. Oh, we're. Uh, Voldemort with, with gets the Vol- Elder Mark. Wand, and he's like... <laughs> yeah, it's fucking hard as shit. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Um, all right. To I'm the really movie, excited to watch it. Okay. List. Let's talk about Death Hills Part 2 really quick, and then I'm going to say a quick review of Children I Haven't, and I'm going to bed. Um, of what? Oh, yeah. Death Hills Part 2 is an all-out war film. The visuals are insane. It's funny. Neville is the fucking king when he blows the bridge. Yeah. Ice is like 500 dudes on its peak. I love the hunt for uh, Ravenclaw, like the Ravenclaw Horcrux in the midst of all the chaos. It's super intense. Um, Yeah. Voldemort is just absolutely iconic in every scene he's in in this movie. I was joking. Potter is dead! (laughs) Dude. Dude, Beth hates this shit so much every time we watch that movie. Because he, he comes out and he does that speech and he goes, eh, eh, eh. like he gives yeah. such a goofy eh, ass eh, laugh. Eh. She hates it, dude. Oh my god, it's so funny. Um Yeah, it, it it's iconic. Like it is such an insanely satisfying conclusion to yeah. an eight movie saga. The characters are so fully realized the the actions there it is in, insanely intense there's no time wasted again like i was saying it's like 15 minutes of backstory and then it's right into it the moment they get into hogwarts it's like well even before then because they're in the vault they're in uh bellatrix's vault and it's such a sick ass scene it's so cool um with the duplicated cups it's fun as hell uh yeah it's just a great it's such a fun movie right ray finds absolutely insane i love yeah. it five stars it's my second favorite harry potter movie uh I dude love it. what what a crazy name that harry gave his son albus yeah. severus potter god what the hell yeah just One setting of my favorite... his son up to get bullied <laughs> Yeah, dude, one of my favorite moments. I can't remember which movie it's from, but it's uh, when Dumbledore reads his entire name. Oh, it's Order of the Phoenix when he goes to the oh. court. and <laughs> Albus, Brian, Wolf. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like the Brian is like two thirds of the way through it. He's like Albus. And he says all these like mythical names. He goes, Brian, Dumbledore. Dude, it's so funny. I'm finding. <laughs> I'm finding yeah, this so you right can now. Find the full name. Because I can never remember it. Um. 
He's like Albus Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore. That's peak. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I love the the like reunion in the train station at the end. Like with Dumbledore, I mean, like between Harry and Dumbledore. Oh, after the, King, Harry dies. the King's Cross. Yeah, that King's scene Cross makes station. Me yeah, cry it's, it's phenomenal. Time. Yeah, it, it is so so good. I absolutely love Deathly Hallows Part Two. I can't. I cannot wait until, even if Jagger doesn't like him, I can't wait till he watches them so we can talk more about Harry Potter. Just do an entire episode about Harry Potter because we've been racing through these movies and yeah, there's so much to say about all of them. I can't wait to and glaze the fuck out of Chamber of Secrets. One last thing before we talk about yeah. Children of Heaven. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. The boy, the boy who lived. lived. Come, Come to die. To die. Ah, well, never never never. Hell yeah. We, we felt like we, we, we talked about it before the pod. We were like, we have to do yeah. this. We can't yeah, not want, do it. Yeah. yeah, we killed that shit. Evan, Evan messaged me <laughs> while he was watching it. He was like holding was up holding a pen a... during that scene. And he was like, Trey, do you do this as well? Or am I crazy? And I'm like, what do you think? I'm some kind of fucking animal. Of course I do yeah. it. <laughs> Everybody does that. Yeah. Harry Potter, um, the boy who lived come to die. Oh, my it's so, so good. good. All right. Jagger. Let's bring Jagger back. Yeah, let's bring Jagger back. All right. Jagger's back. Hello. How much of that did you did you listen to? Uh, none of it. That's good, because we were spoiling hard. Oh, okay. We were. Um, I heard you yeah, say we, Brian we ran through all a the couple movies. of times. Oh. <laughs> no, you say? we're talking about Dumbledore's full name, and there's this scene in uh, Half-Blood Prince, or is it Order? Order it's Order. Yeah. It, where he shows up to, like, this court proceeding, and he has all these magical names, but one of his names is, like, middle names is brian so he's like albus percival wolfric brian dumbledore oh, and it's really that's goofy that's <laughs> peak um, um are you are you here to be to purchase our battery operated vagina oh, um i dude. i listened back to our pod for that episode and i can't stop quoting it now <laughs> dude you gotta watch the movie it's so peak i was listening to the film scoop and they were like oh yeah 16 millimeters coming out soon. The, the return of Max California. And the return Wait. of the battery operated. Vagina. I watched this movie, Jagger. It's a Nicolas Cage uh, crime thriller. Eight millimeters? Uh, eight millimeters. With Joaquin yeah. Phoenix? Yeah. Dude, that movie's been on the top of my watch list. Oh, me. it's so peak. But there's this line Nicolas Cage walks, uh, Joaquin Phoenix runs like a porn shop, like a sex toy shop. And uh, Nick Cage walks in, and Joaquin goes, Ah, I see you're here for the battery operated vagina. <laughs> and Nick's like, No, nah, I'm not here for that. And he leaves, and then he comes back like half an hour later, and he's like, Ah, I see you're back for the battery operated vagina. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Dude, Max California, that's his name, Walking Phoenix's character, cinema. Eight millimeters peak. Um, yeah, I have work tomorrow. So I'm going to rattle off some quick thoughts about uh, Children of Heaven and then dip out of here while Jagger glazes it really hard. It, yeah. it, it is a really wholesome movie. Uh, it, it, it's a good time. Like, it's really cute. <laughs> It's just a like a beautiful story about sibling love. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It it's uh, really well shot and it feels very authentic. I thought like the it feels real. Like you tell me it's a documentary. I believe you. Um, yeah. The 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 like for the marathon scene, like the four K shit when they run or when they run. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, got me all in my feels. Uh, yeah, it's really really good. Um. I'm glad I watched it. I want to watch it again because I was uh, playing Elden Ring while I watched it. And it's not in English, so I definitely missed some stuff. But, I mean, you know, DLC comes out tomorrow night. So I will rewatch it. I gave it a three and a half. It's probably closer to a four. Um, yeah, it's really good. Fair enough. I will, I'm very excited for our M. Night Shyamalan episode on Saturday. And I'm sorry yes. I dip out early, but boys gonna make some bread yeah dude you gotta go yeah literally right. and metaphorically 
Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You make yeah. bread to make the bread. You know. Yes, sir. All right. See you, boys. See you, Evan. Yeah. Um, Jagger, I'm going to give my thoughts real quick because I'm like Evan. I don't have too many deep things to talk about. And then you can just glaze. Okay. Um, I won't even glaze for that long. But... You do whatever you want, man. Um, so, Children of Heaven, I thought was cute. Like Evan said, it was good, wholesome, nice little kids movie. Nothing too deep here, um, at least that I picked up personally. Um, Jagger, n- knowing Jagger, who <laughs> picks up everything, no matter how deep it's hidden, um, <laughs> will have something to say about that, I'm sure. I'm sure there's stuff that I missed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's well made. It's cute. It's wholesome. Um, acting is good. The actors who play the two kids are really good. Uh, yeah, it was good. Um, I mean, the way I view this film is the idea that there are a lot of movies sort of that fall under a very similar umbrella with this film. Um, yeah that show it in a slightly more unrealistic way. Maybe they throw some jokes in, this and that. Mm -hmm. But this film is really just life at its most pure. I mean, there's a film called EO about, like, a donkey that sort of ends up on the run and it gets abused and beaten. And they show the whole film through the perspective of this donkey. And it's a beautiful film. Um about how, like, the donkey doesn't understand that the people are beating it because it's not doing anything wrong. It's just a donkey, and then it's, like, the guilt of the donkey. And I think that that's sort of what this film feels like. You're watching these children that are surrounded by terrible people that are being used for things, and the coach only wants this kid to be in the race because this kid's a fast runner. The dad only cares when the kid's doing well. And he's horrible to the child outside of that. You know, Mm -hmm. you've got these kids that are surrounded by these terrible people. I'm sorry, there's a fly in my room and I'm dying. Um, (laughs) Oh, that fly. Yeah, that sucks. I hate that. I hate it when it gets behind the blinds, between the window (laughs) and the blinds, and you hear it buzzing and then hitting the blinds, and you're like, bro, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, that's what was happening while you guys were talking about Harry Potter. I'm not even kidding. It was behind. You Jagger's just over here like, what the hell? Why is this happening now? Um, but I was, um, I was sort of mesmerized by the fact that the director had the idea of, if we take that, which is an idea that was popularized by the 400 Blows, I think, did it really, really well. If we take that idea and we give the kids a conflict, that they miss, they're missing a pair of shoes. Yeah. And they need to, it's so simple. But if you surround them by these complex other characters and these other higher, both higher and lower problems with all the people around them, and all of their conflict comes over a pair of shoes, it's the layering to this film that just unfolds and unfolds. And you have wholesome and you have sad and you have beautiful and you have poignant. There's so much going on. For an 85-minute film about shoes. And I think yeah. there's something so genuinely incredible about the fact that it was pulled off this incredibly. Mm-hmm. There's something almost mystifying about it. And films come around like this once in a lifetime. So to bring back an old question that we would ask of does this belong on the IMDb Top 250, I'd say Yes. And I think that this belongs on a lot more lists, but I think that this is a film that, from what I've heard, is pretty under the radar. So, yeah, check yeah. this one out. Uh, it's poignant, it's beautiful. Uh, and yeah, take what I said into a little bit of consideration uh, so you're not walking into it doing what I was, which was like, oh, great, I get to watch an 85-minute movie about kids that are, swipping, are swapping shoes. Um, and that <laughs> that was my mindset going into it. But yeah, I loved it. I have it at... Uh, I added a four and a half. I'll bring it up to a low five. I really do think it's that incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I did see again. I didn't pick up any of that. That's <laughs> like, God, that's why I respect you so much is you pick up all that when I'm just like, yeah, it's sweet. It's simple. Whatever. Golly, <laughs> man. You're so smart. Um, Thank you. Also, is that an army of darkness t-shirt? 
Yeah, it is. I get, I knew it looked like a comic book, but I couldn't figure out what it's like. What comic book? And then I read Groovy, and I was like, Oh, it's Evil Dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you for joining us today. We that was a long episode, but uh, yeah, we, had a, we that I mean that was one of the most that's the most fun I've had in an episode in a while. We had yeah, a good that was time a fun. Today. Uh, we were all laughing and having a good time. Um, again, we'll see you Saturday for Last Airbender and After Earth. Um, and again, thank you for joining us today on the Average Film Enjoyer, and we'll see you next time.